My clients often ask, how do I know if I can retire early? And while I love that question, the fact that they're asking it shows they are not ready. And here's why. Okay, number one, usually they're just starting out. So many times I get people saying, I got a lot of money. What am I gonna do with it now? And then a lot of money to so that might be five or 10,000 bucks. Now, just so you know, five or $10,000 will not make anybody financially free, right? But they get a little bit of money because they've never had that much before, you know? And that's great. I love it. We wanna celebrate that with all of our might. However, it might just be okay. Just let it sit there. Because once they get a little bit of money, they get antsy. And this is what happens is that most of the time when those people ask that question, they kind of have this gambler mentality. They want to make money really fast. They get impatient. And impatience is a scarcity emotion. They might seem like they're excited and like it's really an emotion of abundance, but it's really not. It's scarcity. They're impatient. And whenever you get impatient, you make bad decisions. So it's sometimes the best thing they can do is just let it sit there. And I know there's gonna be some of you guys trolling around, be like, oh, that's bad, that's horrible. You don't make any money letting money sit there. You're right, you don't. But you know what you don't do? You don't lose money either because those people usually go put their money in something they gamble in. They try to buy that hot stock that their neighbor or their friend or their cousin talked about. And whenever it's hot, that means it's no longer hot, right? When it's hot, it's not. Because for it to be hot, it means somebody already made money on it in the meantime. And then they of course go and they just say, great, let's do this, right? And they jump in and they jump in too late. That's what they call dumb money going into the investment. It goes up for a little bit and then bam, it crashes and they lose money. So sometimes the best thing you can do, especially if you're just starting, is let the money sit there. Let it grow a little bit more. Let it st stay in savings. Hey, you can even Go to some of our other videos. We talk about different savings accounts where we talk about doing online savings accounts or even better yet, infinite banking. Infinite banking could be a great way to still make a good return on your money, build it up so that you can use it to invest later on versus tying it up in like a 401ks or IRAs where it gets locked away in prison and you can't get to it until you're 60. And obviously, if you want to retire early, those are not the places you're trying to go. So bonus tip for you. If you want to retire early, don't invest in things or using vehicles that don't allow you to retire early. For example, 401ks and IRAs, you got to wait till you're 59 and a half years old before they won't slap you with a 10% penalty. And then on top of that, you have to pay taxes. That's not worth it. Even a Roth IRA. Some people are like, oh, I got the Roth. Yay. I'm going to be 40 years old and retire financially free. No, you're not because you can access it. But now any of the money that grows in the Roth IRA, guess what? can also be penalized and taxed, you're right? So you gotta be careful do, following the right rules and using the right vehicles, which is why infinite banking works great. So again, if you're just starting out, maybe the best thing you could do instead of just trying to go and invest really quick for passive income, is actually start to build it up in other places like beyond a savings account. You know, things like infinite banking, that could be your answer. Now, another reason that people might be saying how to retire early is because they're really trying to escape. They're trying to escape from their work because maybe they hate their job. Maybe they're burning out. You know, I can't tell you how many times I've uh, talked with dentists or even orthodontists, especially orthodontists. Shout out to you guys. By the time they hit 38, 39 years old, they're already ready to retire. And they're like, let's get me out of here. I got to escape. And so sometimes they just want to escape. Again, impatience. When you get into those scarcity emotions, that could be very dangerous for you. That's where you might actually start gambling with your money, putting in things, hoping for great returns. Here's a key tip. Don't go chasing after rates of return. Now, granted, with my clients, they know they can get at least about a 10% or more return on the kind of investments that we have them do. Great passive income, stable, it's steady and predictable. But understand that I've built that network of our vetted investment professionals over years. I've met these investors over time. Over many, many years, I've built this network, right? Where most people, they just go and Google or they go to a podcast and they hear that podcast. They say, oh, that sounds like the answer. That person's awesome. And I'll tell you, sometimes the most savvy sounding people, not me, obviously, because, you know, I mean, come on, does a savvy guy have legs like this? No, he doesn't, right? We don't have that kind of coolness. But there are some people that are just slick salespeople that have absolutely no clue what they're doing or even worse yet, maybe they're successful in another place. Maybe they're a great business kind of uh, influencer. And then they say, hey, now I'm going into the investing world. You should invest with me, right? Like a Grant Cardone or something like that. Well, that's great that he does. he's successful there, but that doesn't mean he's gonna be successful with investments. Be careful not to get sucked in because they're good marketers, because they're just good salespeople. That stuff, it's more important than just the fact that you lose money. You lose your freedom, 
You could potentially lose your marriage and your family because you made desperate decisions because you're just trying to escape. And I get it. I've been there, guys. I've been in a place where I was over a million dollars in debt, $16,000 in the hole each month. And I remember my wife at that time, she was saying, you know what, Chris, things are so bad right now. You just need to get your crap together. Maybe I should go live, move in with my sister and take the kids with me. It was like the worst thing she could have said to me. I started panicking. I'm like, no, I need my support system. Don't do that, right? It was like that Cinderella man moment. If you guys ever seen that movie with Russell Crowe, it was like, she was talking about moving the kids out. I've been there, guys. I know what it's like when I've been desperate. Heck, I mean, being over a million dollars in debt, you realize I was a million dollars more broke than the homeless guy on the street, <laughs> right? He was a million dollars richer than I was. I've been in desperate places before. I've been in places where I wanted to be out of the rat race faster than I was actually on track to becoming. It's okay to wanna to get out of the rat race, but don't do it as a way to try to escape. Patience, right? Keeping a level head, doing things smart, smartly, intelligently, whatever, whatever you wanna call it, right? Doing it well, <laughs> that's what's important. Being wise in your decision is so important. And this is why you might need some guidance. This is why you might need a, another kind of a, a sound of reason to say, hold on, slow down there, Sparky. Let's just calm down. Let's look at this a little bit more rationally here. This may not be the best decision for you, all right? So you know, I have to, often with my clients, I have to get them to be calm, help them to get into a, a, a space where they're actually in an abundant space and then we can make wise decisions that help them get there. And it's not get rich quick. I mean, all this stuff requires some time. It requires doing it right. Because the one thing you never wanna do, it's not just about getting a return on your money, it's getting a return back of your money. You wanna make sure you have your money protected and then you create a return on top of that. That's key. And then the third, the big reason why I see people asking this question is because they don't really have any way to measure it. They're, they're, it's kind of an ambivalent type of thing. They really have no rhyme or reason. They don't even know what that number is. And so, you know, they're like, well, I think I want this, but it, for them, financial freedom is more a feeling than it is a number. And that's true. This is why you got to focus on your scarcity emotions because you can even hit your numbers yet still feel like you're in the rat race. So remember that financial freedom is more of a state of mind and being than it is just a state of your pocketbook or your bank account, right? So. My call to action to you is this. How do you know your numbers? How can you measure it? First, you gotta know how much money you're actually spending every month or what your actual bills are. And then you also gotta know your retirement income goal, or I like to call it my FI goal, my financial independence goal. So for example, uh, I recommend everybody to get to know their numbers is use a tool called Mint. Mint, you can get the app or you can go online to mint.com. Mint, like the flavor, like the smell, like it smells like, you know, your bubble gum, right? Well, not bubble gum. Who even says bubble gum anymore? I guess old guys like I do, right? Uh, bubble gum, like, you know, mint, double mint gum, double your pleasure, double your fun with extra double mint gum, right? Mint, you know, go to Mint, find the app. If you go to Mint, the nice thing is you can tie it in with your bank accounts. You can get everything downloaded. And when you start to teach about what those different expenses are, it remembers it. So it can actually measure how much you're actually spending every month. Forget about doing budgets. Budgets are ridiculous if you haven't been tracking your money. If you don't know how much money's coming in or going out, budgets are worthless, okay? And by the way, I think budgets suck, okay? I love what I call a spending plan because money is meant to be spent, even if you spend it into a savings account, even if you spend it to invest, it's meant to be spent. However, um, it's not meant to just budget and live in bondage, right? And so when you use Mint, it actually tracks the numbers coming in. You can make adjustments and figure out what your real numbers of spending are. I'll tell you, I had one client where she was, she came to us just for doing investments. She had lots of money to invest. But as we looked at her numbers, we said, wait a minute, we can actually help pay off some of these loans and debts and free up some cash flow. We'll free up $4,000 a month. Understand that for our clients, to free up $4,000 a month, about $50,000 a year, that saved her about four hundred dollars to 500000 that she didn't have to invest to create passive income. Because what did that do? It, retired, it got her number lower because her financial independence number at that time was $22,000 a month. But then lowering it by $4,000, it's now $18,000 a month. Now we get all the rest of the cash we can use to get her there. And the cool thing is we can get her there this year. So again, you got to know your numbers. You got to know what you're spending. So you know what your burn rate is. And then to put your financial independence number, I like to put it at 10% above what you're spending. If you're spending $10,000 a month, put your financial independence number at $11,000 a month, and then we can get to work. I would love to know, are you trying to retire early? What age are you trying to retire by? Put that in the comments below and also watch this video, how to achieve financial independence and retire early. Check it out.